So I'm on my way to the studio and I'm working on some new projects today. I thought it might be fun if I brought you guys with me and we'll do a day at the studio. So let's go. I thought before I head out the door, I'd show you guys what I'm wearing today. Pretty basic, just jeans and a little jean blouse. And I have the most important thing, my mask. Mask on. Let's go. It's super hot out guys, so I think I'm gonna stop at this little corner store up the street and get something to drink. Fingers crossed, no one steals her. This is a little Asian corner store and they have lots of yummy drinks. This is one of my favorites. It's a light jade juice and it has little chunks of it in there too. I didn't say it's hard to bite with a mask, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Now my least favorite part, the two flights of stairs. It's a little bit messy right now, but that's all right. And today we'll be working on this guy. It's called a quick print hot foil debosser and my boss got this one a few years ago. Basically what it's used for is debossing, which is kind of like stamping on leather and paper goods. So this middle hot plate gets really hot and then you pull down this arm to stamp your design on your surface. So these are the little metal stamps or they're really called dies that go into the debosser. You can get custom made ones like this with any design you want. So these dies here have our logo and company name on them. Then you can also use pre-made dies like these, which are individual letters, and then you can use them to write words or make initials, whatever you want. So this is what the letter dies look like when they are debossed onto leather. This is the project I'll be working on today. They're coasters made with leather scraps and I'll be debossing a die on the front and on the back, so they'll look like this. So to start, I'm grabbing all the coasters that will need to be debossed. Since the machine gets super hot, up to 500 degrees, I wear a glove to put the die in. First I twist this knob to remove the die used before, then unlock the hot plate here, rotate it up, and put the die in like this. Then rotate it back down and lock it back into place. I'm debossing the front of the coasters first and I use the grid and numbers to make sure it's lined up perfectly. Then pull the arm forward which presses down the hot plate and debosses the die into the leather. And this is how the front of the coasters will look. So now I'll emboss all of the fronts of these and then I'll move on to the backs after. Over time and practice, I've definitely gotten faster at using the machine, but I have burned myself a few times. Then for the back of the coasters, I've already changed the die. So they'll look like this with the logo. Then I've got one more die I want to use. This one I actually designed, and it's for my vintage and handmade shop. I'm a big believer in upcycling and creating less waste, so I'm using these little leather samples that my boss was going to throw out to create little leather tags for my shop. They already have a hole at the top, so I just need to deboss them. Then cut off the bottom bit where the leather name is. And now I have cute tags to add to orders from my shop. I really like how this red one turned out. I'm kind of obsessed with details, so little things like this make me stupid happy. Now back to the coasters. The little grooves on the coasters are there so the string has a place to sit when they're tied together. 
They are sold in sets of four, so I'm going to wrap them with string so when they're ordered by a customer, they're ready to be shipped. I'm just about done at the studio and I'm getting really hungry. So I thought I would bring you guys with me to go get something to eat. There's this really cool part of town called Industry City that's really close by. They have a bunch of restaurants and little shops and snacky stuff. Yeah, so I thought I'd bring you guys with me. 2 a.m. in the car playing our favorite song. Turn it up, windows down, we sing along. So Industry City is made up of a handful of these six-story buildings, and then in between each of them is a different themed courtyard. The buildings were built at the beginning of the 1900s and were used for manufacturing and distribution. But around the 1960s, they started to sit empty. So over the past few years, they have been slightly renovated, but still kept a lot of their vintage charm. Now Industry City is home to a lot of smaller businesses and companies. There's lots of restaurants, bars, and shopping scattered throughout the buildings. I go here pretty often, and it seems like there's always almost something new popping up. This restaurant has some of the best curry I've ever had. As you can see, it's just a really cool place to walk around, and there's so much different art and creative pieces. This grocery store is fairly new, and I'm in love with their tile. They have a really good selection of dried fruits that I like. Then there's also a chocolate shop where you can watch them make chocolate from these huge windows. One of my favorite parts are these Maker's Guild shops. Once up the stairs, there's all these little studios where you can watch people make their art and then some of them also sell their items, so it's kind of like a shop and a studio. These are all the Maker's Guild studio owners and then it has in bold text what they make. There's even a tattoo parlor up here. Then as you've probably noticed, there's tons of indoor and outdoor places to sit and relax. I really like this courtyard where they have a bunch of trees and tables scattered within. They also have really amazing murals here, kind of like everywhere. They even have a yurt you can sit inside and then during the winter they close up the sides and it's heated. Another one of my favorite places in Industry City is Japan Village. Basically, it's a big Asian grocery store that has lots of unique treats and foods that are hard to find in New York. I have the biggest sweet tooth, so I always go straight for the sugary stuff. I'm kind of on a lychee kick today, so I'm gonna give these gummies a try. I've tried just about everything here, but I've never had this strawberry caramel corn. Is it good? Let me know in the comments. Ooh, these chocolate wheat cakes look so good. They also have them in green tea. I'm getting one of these. Not the most nutritious snacks to get, but I already don't eat very healthy, so it's nothing new. Treats have been got, now let's go sit in the courtyard and try them. Here's another one of the murals I was talking about. This looks like a pretty good spot. Oh my god, it smells so good. It's pretty good. It's like ribbons of chocolate with really soft dough. Okay, let's try it. Oh my gosh, those are really good. It's starting to get pretty dark now. It's about eight o'clock and it gets dark here at like 8.30. So I thought I would take you to my favorite place to watch the sunset. It's just like a five minute um, bike ride from Industry City and it has a really good view of the skyline. So yeah, let's go watch the sunset together. Ooh. 